everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is not my first time filming my pantry video, but it is my first time filming it in this house. I have filmed one in the past in my previous house, which was a totally different setup. Every time I show my pantry on Instagram or on my website, people are like, goals, how'd you do it? All this stuff. It's really easy to do. It just takes a little bit of determination. You gotta carve out the time, you gotta make the decision to do it. I'm gonna show you the things that make it super easy to keep it clean. What I'm gonna show you is how I go about it. Once you get it done, maintaining and upkeeping is a breeze. I do wanna preface this by saying my sister-in-law, Tassia, who is Chris's sister, the one who set this whole thing up for me, we've done it sort of together. Before I get into how everything is organized and what we did. I wanna just tell you that whether you have a pantry that's more of like a walk-in like I have, or you have a pantry that is more of a cabinet, using containers is your best friend because when things are falling all over the place, you don't even know what you have, it's just a disaster. To begin with, the only way to be successful with this is to go into your pantry, no matter what type of pantry you have, clear everything out, get everything out of the pantry, Put it into your kitchen or onto your counters or onto the floor, clean the shelves, and start with a blank canvas. If you do it like little by little by little, it's not gonna work. You gotta clean it out and you gotta start fresh. What I think is a really good idea is to number one, get rid of anything that you haven't touched or don't use. Even if something hasn't gone bad, but you haven't touched it in six months or a few months and you have no intention of doing it, just get rid of it. We don't need extra things. I know that whenever, you know, I go to grocery stores or I buy stuff online, I'm always wanting to try new things. For the most part, I'm not, you know, using them. So doing regular cleanouts is really important. You don't need to throw out the food, you can go donate it, you can give it to somebody, but just get it out of your space. Second thing is while it is out in your kitchen, I'm pointing to my kitchen, it could be your kitchen, <laughs> but while it's out of the pantry area, start to section it. Put items with their items. I'll show you what I mean by that as I go through. I'm gonna be doing this video more in the style of like me showing you with the camera because it's almost impossible with the way my pantry is set up and my tripod to really show you with me being in front of the camera, so I'll be behind it. Before we start, I wanna show you a few things that you're gonna be seeing a lot in this video and things that I think are really important to keep you successful and those are called containers. They're kind of annoying to buy because they're not cheap, but they last forever. This is a, I think they're called pop containers. They're by OXO. I have tons of them. You can actually buy them. I will give you guys a link down below, but you can also, I think, buy them in sets from like Costco and stuff. I, you know, didn't start by having every single thing in a container, but then as I've gone on, it's kind of become an obsession. It also looks really good. It keeps things really fresh. Containers are gonna be something that's gonna make your life really easy. A label maker. I use the Brother like P-Touch. I will link it for you. As well as bins. These plastic bins are a lifesaver. They're excellent when you have a lot of loose things that you don't just want, you know, lining your shelf. This keeps it all in one place. You label it with what it is and you just slide it into its place. So for example, here I have a bunch of different packages of things. They're in one of these bins and I'm able to just slide it in and everything stays organized so when I need something I just pull it out and instead of making a big mess and knocking 500 things over I just take what I need and then slide it back in. All right so let's get going with the top row. I have my bigger bins up here. These are for my flowers. So what we did is we took out all the flowers and we counted how many bins we would need for per thing. For example I use almond flour a lot. I actually need to re-up on it. So I knew I needed a big bin for that. I also use paleo flour and gluten-free all-purpose a lot. So those were all definitely gonna go in a big bin. Coconut flour, generally in recipes, you don't use as much as let's say almond flour or these flours. So it didn't need as big of a bin. Shredded coconut I use a lot because my uh, non-dairy milk of choice is coconut milk and I make it myself. So I go through a lot of this, so this had to go in a big bin. And then coconut flakes, uh, flakes I had ordered a ton of them. So when we were organizing the pantry, we needed a big bin for that. Depending on how much you generally stock or keep of certain things, 
you will know what size bins you need to get. So down here, I have some other flowers as well. These are flowers that I don't use as much as those flowers. So they are in smaller containers. So you see I have oat flower, buckwheat flower, chickpea flower, tiger nut flower, and behind my tiger nut flower, I also have some tapioca flower. They're all labeled. These are using my P-Touch. Anything extra will stay behind. So I have extra oat flour right here. It's all nicely put away behind there. From the front, you see a nice containered situation. So we keep the overstock in the back. I happen to have the luxury of having that space. My shelves are pretty deep. If you have an area in your basement or somewhere else where you can keep extra, then you can keep the extra there and then refill the bins as needed. Or if you are living in a smaller space, just buy what you need and then it works like that. Down here we have my grains. We have my buckwheat, my steel cut oats, my rolled oats, and then I keep some cereal here on the side. In the back kind of looks a little bit messy. From here you don't really see it. I have like all my extra stuff. So I have my extra oats. I have my extra everything that's here. Again, presented really nicely here in the front. And in the back it's a bit messy, but it doesn't really matter because as this empties out, which it's kind of is, I refill from there. It just works really, really well. Here are more grains. I've got my quinoa, my spreaded brown rice, my brown rice, my wild rice. You know, I use less wild rice than I do brown rice. So my brown rice is in a bigger container. I actually use more sprouted. I should probably swap these out, but at the time that I was doing this, I wasn't doing as much sprouted brown rice. Quinoa, also, I use this quite often, more so than I do, you know, the wild rice. Down here, we have my legumes. I probably use lentils the most, so that is in the larger container. Back here, I have my black lentils. I have my green lentils. For the most part, I like to use my sprouted three colored lentils the most. Regular chickpeas, I have sprouted chickpeas, sprouted black beans, and behind I have regular black beans and then any other over stock as we call it will be in the back. There you have the grains, you have my legumes, super self-explanatory. Now let's just go up here. These are really great. I got these at Linen Chest. So these are like these baskets. You can actually stack them on top of each other. Any basket will really do. I like that this has this sort of dip down. This is where I store my pastas because I have all different types of gluten-free pastas. Eventually I will put them into containers like this. So I have my all my different types of pastas in here, super easy. I can just pull this out when I wanna make a decision on what kind I have. It keeps things really clean. Same with this, I have my stand-up sort of longer spaghetti. So I have some pad thai noodles here in the front, brown rice pasta. So all my stuff is just really easily categorized and organized. Up here I have more pasta. You guys tell I like pasta? I have some of my like grain-free taco shells that are coming out. I'm gonna have to clean that. Here I have some like nori wraps, rice paper wraps. These are just things that just like lean over on the side here. But that makes it really easy to use these crates, containers for packages. It's, it's really perfect. These are my snacks. So these are sort of more my loose items. This is always the area of my pantry that is the messiest. It's also the one that interchanges the most. Chips and crackers. I'm probably gonna order now more of these now that I'm watching this. I don't have too, too much packaged food like this. This just kind of all lives here. My rice cakes. Something else I do love are these kukla treats. So these I have in a container. It just keeps them fresh, makes it easier than having a bunch of different little packages everywhere. Then up here we have my nuts and my seeds. I have my sunflower seeds, almonds, pumpkin seeds, tiger nuts, and then behind we have walnuts. I have mixed nuts cashews and if I wanted to I could go back and back and back and back depending on how many different types of nuts and seeds I wanted to have here but this is perfectly acceptable for me these are a really good size I find for nuts nuts go bad within a few months so you don't want to have too many like I wouldn't want to fill up something like this with almonds because they would go bad. Now I'm using a lot more of these pull out containers rather than the pop ones. This is for a bunch of different things. It's not just like for one type of food. So here we have some snacks. I've got some of the protein bars we like from Saqqara. Oh, I have more kukla that should go into there. 
See, always getting better. I'm gonna fill those up. I usually keep my chocolate in here. I'm actually waiting for my order to come in. And then we have what we call the Dep, because here in Quebec, corner stores and convenience stores are called the Dep Enter. This is where we keep gummies or little candies. My husband loves these ginger chews. We have some smart sweets, even though I don't really eat those much. These matcha almonds. I was really on a kick of these like unreal candies. I just made it its own container because it was getting wild. I actually have some for when my nieces and nephews come over. I have some of these Yum Earth Organic lollipops, which I kind of want to have one right now. I think I might. And then down here, overstock of some nuts or like different kinds. So these are pumpkin seeds, but they're like mango and chili ones. I have extra pecans. I have some maple walnuts and peanuts. Down here I have granola. My husband loves granola. So here I have my granolas, different granolas just lined up in this bin just to pull that in and out. Love it. I have my dates. I have some goji berries. I actually am going to have to fill up some more of these because I recently just ordered a ton more dried fruit. So we'll have to make space for that. We're getting lower and lower. Down here I have my teas. So again, they're in these pull-out containers like I showed you. In the back I have a ton of extras. But these are really the ones I drink often. Just keeps it really nice and organized. Then I have my coffee. Love coffee. So here's a little bit bigger because coffee takes up more space. This just keeps it really nice and organized, really easy. Down here I have more baking stuff. So I have my cocoa powder, coconut sugar, cane sugar, brown sugar, psyllium husk. Down here, I have more of my baking stuff. So this is in a larger bin because there's a lot of items. And then inside, I have another type of container. These you can get on Amazon. I'm gonna link them. I have like my chocolate chunks, I have extra chocolate chunks. I have chocolate chips, I have cacao nibs. I have baking powder, I have baking soda. When I'm baking, really all I do is I just bring out this entire bin and then I take whatever other ingredients like from here or from up there in the flours that I need. Generally, you always really need this bin when you're baking because you have your vanilla, you have your chocolate chips, you have your baking powders and sodas. So, you know, you know how it goes. And then over here, I have baking supplies. I have things like sprinkles, cookie cutters, muffin cups and things like that. And then on this side here, I keep like any boxed baked good stuff. If it was just lining my pantry, I wouldn't even know I had it. So this is just a good way to keep it near the baking supplies to know it's there and that I have it. Over to this side. You guys getting bored yet? <laughs> it's a lot. I have my tomato sauce. I use tomato sauce often and I like to use it from a jar because I love Rouse. So I have my Rouse. I have another one by this local brand here in Montreal called Stefano. And then I also have my canned tomatoes. In the back I have extra sauces. I have these little mini pop oxo bins for things like sesame seeds, black sesame seeds, extra nutritional yeast, sun-dried tomatoes, just for like the things that you have extras of. These little ones are really good, stuff that you don't use too often, but you kind of just want to keep it organized as well. And these are really good also for household things like pins and extra buttons and elastics and stuff, so it just keeps things really organized. Here we're going back into all of those pull-out containers. I love olives, so I'll put like my olives and my artichokes in here, jarred foods, so anything like these are just some roasted red peppers, capers, coconut milk, so light coconut milk. I also had one back there for regular coconut milk but I really love this Chaz light one so I fit as many as I can in here and then whatever else I put in the back canned foods I don't use that many canned foods but I always have them on hand some chickpeas some hearts upon pastas jackfruit we have some tuna because my husband loves tuna condiments so again Dijon barbecue sauces just extra condiments in here extra spices saffron different blends down here I'll keep like my broths I only have two right now but usually I could fill this up have tons of broth so I can even double them. We made sure of that because often I do stock up on broths, they don't go bad. If you buy, you know, non-dairy nut milks and things like that, they could also go down here. I had a bunch or bought a bunch of za'atar, so I have that. These are some gluten-free breadcrumbs. I'll probably never end up using these, but I'm not ready to part with them yet. And that is like the main section 
of my pantry. I just went through the main section of my pantry. I know it's a little bit intense. Obviously, I do have a lot of space. I cook a lot. I have a lot of room for things. So this is like probably not your average situation, but I'm just showing you what I have. When you take everything out of your pantry and you really start going through it and you start sectioning it, part of the reason why sectioning it is so important is because if you are planning to do this whole situation with the containers, it makes it really easy to really go through what you want to be in containers and what you want to be in these types of containers, like pull out containers. As everything's out of the pantry, pre-plan what you need what for. Do you need larger ones? Do you need smaller ones? Do you need the ones that you pull out? What sizes? That part is kind of the annoying part, but once you get that underway and you just like spend the day doing this, you give yourself that really good day of doing it, and then you use those containers and you put them all away maintaining the cleanliness and maintaining the organization is literally the easiest thing it just really takes that like one day of really focusing and just getting that done don't procrastinate but give yourself a day set it aside and just commit yourself to it and i promise you it's going to make your life so much easier because as you go on and on and you get more stuff, you're always just gonna be refilling your containers and everywhere's gonna have a place to go. So it's one day, just commit yourself, just do it, do it, do it. Let's get into some supplements and stuff. I actually have reduced how many supplements I've had because I don't take as many as I used to, but I still have a lot. I have these really great trays. I think I got these at West Elm a while back. They just make life really easy. So here are my like cold remedies. This is really a bunch of tinctures and cleansing stuff. A lot of tinctures in here. There's a method to my madness. This is kind of just like a mix of different vitamin supplements like glutathione and NAC and I don't really use these often. I actually, my supplements that I take every day are out in my kitchen. This is sort of like the overstock or if I started trying something, I'm not willing to get rid of it. I might want to go back to it or or extras it's all here so here I have some like powders down here I have all my gummies and things like that <laughs> this is Chris's section we call it the, the Chris horny goat weed one of his supplements had like horny goat weed in it and so we were making fun of him and we made that label and then I have my travel kit so again everything's in these pull out sort of situations because the last thing you need with supplements is just bottles everywhere and anytime you reach for one, seven other ones knock over. So I can't recommend enough getting these pull out containers. It makes life so much easier, especially with supplements. So like, let's say you had kid stuff, you could write kid stuff and then all your kid stuff could be on one thing and then all your cold remedies could be somewhere and then everything for digestions. Depending on how many supplements you really have, this could really work for you and you could organize that as well and just make it so easy for yourself. All right, last section is this. This is like my kind of random section. So up at the top, I have extra glasses. I break glasses really easily, but I really like my glass edges really thin. So I always keep extra boxes of glasses so that as they break, it can replace them. I have more here because I'm nuts. I'm not a hoarder, I'm a stalker. Like I stock things up. Someone gave me this lemon squeezer and was like, you need to try this. I was like, yeah, I make my own, but thanks. These were from like a party I had. I just kept extras because they're good to have some plastic plates and things like that. I'm not really a fan of these, but you know, sometimes you need them. Extra stuff for if I have people over. I have extra water filters for my water. Here I just have like extra straws. Everything's in a compartment for the most part. I like to keep this stuff still in these compartments because it just still makes things nice and clean and easy. Down here I have a bunch of cookbooks. Love my cookbooks. Here we actually have, this is like one of my favorite items of life, my toaster oven. We had it put on a pull-out shelf because it gets hot in there. We don't want that burning anything down, so we pulled that out. It actually was maybe initially for a microwave 
but my microwave is huge. So that went there and then this goes here, just works well. I have more cookbooks down here. I have some of my extra cleansing drink stuff here, again, in one of these containers. These are like printout recipes. Here I have overstock of like saran wrap and Ziplocs. I barely use them. I've actually had this probably since I moved in because I use so much like silicone stuff. This is a cookbook that my friends, my sisters made for me at my bridal shower. This is like the standard if you're Jewish, everyone has this cookbook. Mm -hmm. Last but not least, I have extra avocado oil and I fill up my canisters outside and I put it back in here. I have extra olive oil back there. I have MCT oils. And then again, I have that pull out little tray where I have some extra coconut aminos, truffle oils, honey, things like that, like the random stuff. Coconut oil and that lives here and these are for my toaster oven. That is pretty much my pantry. I do have another little like drawer outside of my kitchen that's next to the fridge where I keep like almond butters and things like that. We don't have too much stuff like that because we don't eat that much of it and for the most part it just goes in the fridge. That is my pantry. I do realize that I have a large pantry. Most people don't, but you guys have been asking to see it. That is how I organize it. Keeps it really, really simple. There are times where it does get a little bit messy, a little bit overwhelming. I end up filling up this area here, which right now is nice and clean and as that starts to fill up with random things i start to put it away i promise you guys it's so worth doing it's really relaxing once you start doing it it's like anything you know when you have to clean out your closet or when you have to do anything you just got to commit yourself to doing it make the decision and do it and then you'll be like so 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 happy that you did i hope that this was informative to you and not too overwhelming if you guys have any questions or comments you guys can leave them down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will link everything that I can below on this video. Thank you guys for watching. More tips and tricks, by the way, on pantry and organization on my website, www.girlslivingwell.com. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next week.